Hi, Misha here, and something I've kind of always wanted would be a historical figure, preferably in 6 or 7 inch scale, so 110, 112 scale. In fact, we were doing a live stream last night with uh, Fox on the main Misha Go channel, and it even came up, and I just said, you know, I think it'd be neat if someone did a series of that. And I guess because uh, Alexa's all that listening in, something did kind of pop up on my feed later on well it's not 110 or 112 scale it's 118 scale so roughly four inches but i was just too curious and of course it's me so we started with a world war ii soviet russian soldier Gonna pop him open, and if I like him, they also do some Americans and some Germans, I believe. So it's not a huge line, but I don't know. For the money, why not? So these single carded figures are in a bubble, but it's the whole front, and it's not just glued to this back piece. There's actually this tape, which is. Kind of malleable. Kind of reminds me of really giving scotch type. Of course, I am not a collector. And as interesting as I think this might be inside, I don't think this is the kind of thing anyone's going to really ever collect because it's a no name Chinese brand. But that's not a bad thing. After all, everything is made in China now, so brand name or not really doesn't matter. But in theory, you, if you're careful, more careful than I am, could uncard that a lot easier. So, we have a clamshell type plastic here. So far, the packaging is not bad. And see what our Russian World War II guy, Great Patriotic War, has and looks like. It's funny, on the one hand, he feels so tiny. Because I'm used to 6 or 7 inch scale. On the other hand, compared to those uh, micro galaxies from Star Wars, he's huge. And I think it's hilarious that even in this size, he does have optional hands. A couple of weapons. Removable hats. And I actually think this is cool. He comes with a base. Uh, a lot of high-end figures don't come with bases. So, that's actually pretty neat. And I believe he's even pretty articulated for his size. Not just like 5 POA. Let me pop him out and come right back. Okay, well he's not strapped in or even really kind of dimpled in. When I turned it on its side he just fell out. Along with one of his hats. The two hands. So if you do this, make sure you don't have... Because those are pea-sized. And funnily enough, there's actually a, quite a large desiccant pack behind him. That's okay. The guns in the stand are a little more in there. Okay, those popped out pretty easy. The base is fine. Little miniaturized thing. Kind of reminds me of a small version of what I use for my NECA figures. It's fine. It's actually better than the old G.I. Joe ones. And his guns. Okay, I'm already impressed. I kind of figured he would come with, let me pick up this one, a Papa Shaw, a PPSH-41. Kind of the go-to. If I wanted to be super critical, I could say that the barrel shroud is more of a roundy thing than square, but that's just manufacturing. It's tiny, guys. It does have a slight muzzle brake on the end. has a drum. Okay, the sling isn't exactly on the... This side is right. This side is wrong. But I think they did that so we could actually hold it. It's got a tiny little sights on top, or at least nubbins that function as sights. A semi-pistol grip. A little trigger guard, even. And yeah, when you think of World War II, you'd think of the Papa Shaw and Russian hands. And so I, 
I figured his other gun would just be a, a Mosin Nagant. And this is where I was actually impressed. They gave him an SVT-40. And one of the scoped ones. Now technically, yes, the scope shouldn't be directly on top. It should be offset to the side a bit. And again, that one swivel is on the wrong side, but again, I think that's for logistics. It does have a tiny little muzzle brake, which is cool. A little at the front. Little butt pad. Even has the tin round mag hanging down. Even has a very, very small nub that your charging handle. Oh, it even has a little small nub for your rear sight. And even a bit of a nod towards the corrugated metal front. Okay, I, mean, I can be critical. I'm just impressed they actually knew what an SVT-40 was at all. And they got something that looks vaguely correct and tiny 118 scale the gun is relatively sturdy doesn't want to bend but the sling thankfully is really rubbery I wonder if it unplugs it even has little buckles the, the PPSH had one too where'd it go where'd it go they are tiny. Okay, it even has a tiny little dog collar. It's kind of neat. Yeah, so those are the two guns. We also have two pieces of headgear. We have a pretty standard helmet, which is pretty flexible with the strap. It's normal. And we have a little cap, which I'm assuming they intended to be inspired by Oshanka. But I might be wrong. Certainly a little cap, though. And then we also have the tiniest little hands. Good grief. I think that one's a, yeah, a fist. That one also seems to be a little fist. Tiniest little fists. So with the extras out of the way, what about this guy? Alright, I just kind of messed with him for a couple of minutes there off camera. I can't tell you about paint. Uh, you know why. But I can tell you, I'm already impressed with the articulation. In fact, it puts some bigger figures to serve. The leg moves around. It actually is completely double jointed at the knee, going all the way up. Even has small detent notches. The little footsie moves, tilts. I don't know if it rotates side to side. Yeah, it does, or at least kind of rocks around. And the arms. I think they're single jointed, but I mean, considering it's a Ghana uniform, that's pretty good. And they just they also swivel, and the hands obviously move because they pop off anyway. Don't know if they like rock around themselves. It'd be kind of a little too small for that. They were kind of soft and rubbery, which is good. Don't think I'll break thumbs off. Anyone who had the little four inch or really three and three quarter scale GI Joes remembers breaking thumbs. When I first was a kid, it was 12 inch GI Joes, but the three inch or three and a quarter came in when I was still pretty young. He does have some movement at the waist. His head moves all around. Ooh. And the backpack. You know, you'd think it'd just be plugged in like a G.I. Joe backpack. It actually has shoulder straps. I'm going to be honest. I'm really impressed for the size. And some people... Oh, does that... 
the knapsack comes off, or the, I think it's a bedroll, comes off the backpack. And there's a little shovel here, I wonder if that comes off. And there's a, a pouch that definitely comes off. Yeah, I think he was a regular infantryman, I don't see a pistol on him. They didn't really name him, he was just like, you know, Russian World War II soldier. Speaking of names, they seem to be called Joy Toy, but I've also seen them sold under different brand names, because again, Chinese company, and I'm not dogging on the Chinese, I mean, they make all of our stuff. Probably making, you made the camera I'm using on this, I'm just saying the names get a little strange, and you see the same thing sold under different brand names. Who is Ray? He's got a hip. I don't. And his skirt area, his blouse moves. I bet lots of pieces come off this guy. And, and not in a broken way. Although I'm sure I'll manage to break him somehow. I, I'm, I'm talented. You know, I mentioned scale. Let's get the tape measure real quick. Aren't I good at tape measuring? Actually, I actually asked my wife to set it. I'm not sure it's actually side <laughs> the numbers are. I will tell you, this, I set the tape measure to four inches, and he's actually just a smidgen taller, and his legs are slightly bent right now. So I'm going to say he's actually a little bit taller than old school G.I. Joe, maybe. And this is without the helmet on. So he's probably at least an honest four inches. Well, which hat, headwear, should we put on? I think the hands are good for, yeah, gun holding. I uh, don't think I need the fists. I would be, not scared, but I would be patient and careful, says the blind guy, groping around for tiny little hands. I, I won't lose these, but I'll probably put them in a Ziploc bag and not look at them for 10 years. Yeah, so the peg's in the arm, not in the hand, which I'd rather it be in the hand, so if you break a peg, then again, if the peg broke off from the hand and the arm, you'd be up a creek either way. Just be careful. But I'm going to be honest, for what these cost, $17, it's not the worst in the world. Equivalency, that would have been roughly about 6 bucks back when I was a kid. So still a little more than the little G.I. Joe's, but you get a lot more parts and flexibility of the main guy with that. So, wannabe cap, Ushanka, or the not hard, hard hat? Now here's the smaller one, the softer one. This pops around his head. But it didn't come off. I think because it's kind of a rubber material that it just kind of sticks and I could have this reversed. I, yeah, sometimes seeing is helpful. There's a little bump in the front. I wonder if that's supposed to be like an insignia. So I'm going to flip it around. Or bump there, I should say. So is that the front? Feels like there's something there. Either way, it fits both ways. So he can uh, be, uh, I don't know. Can he go gangster? There we go. Okay, I thought we had our first breakage, but it turns out the strap actually separates so you can get this on his uh, head. I was kind of wondering how to get it on without popping that. Now getting it back in this little hole is going to be a fun thing, but oh well. At least it'll be on there. You know what? Just sit on to sit there trying to figure out how to get a small flexible rubber thing into a small flexible rubber hole for a while. We'll put the other cap back on and try out a gun. Why not? By the very nature of figure hands, it's hard for non pistol grip guns to fit them. That's Black Series, that's NECA. So you, a lot of times you see the semi pistol grip area on guns like this Papa Shaw kind of exaggerated but he is holding it and his offhand seems to be where he could 
cradle the front end. Yeah, it's in there pretty good. But let's try the gun that I was actually more excited about. And yeah, he can easily hold it too. Now if I wanted to sit down and really get him twisted around, I think we could even get him to side it and hold it with both hands. But he's really new out of the package. I mean, you just saw it. I can smell the smell of past, uh, plastic out of a package or rubber. So I like to go slow and steady with these things. Sit there and watch something else and just kind of fiddle with it. But I'm seeing potential here. You can definitely tell these are more made to hold such guns than say like the Mandalorian with his uh, his Ambin rifle that he came with. Cool rifle, and they, they needed to include it, but Black Series hands are not meant for this, even when they try. And of course we have a sling too. And just as in real life, a backpack complicates using a sling. Again, I could I sit here and mess with it. It seems like the... Uh, Strap is plenty long and flexible. And I'd like to really put it over his whole shoulder. But again, a little bit of doing. And just had a minute here to look at this guy. He's not loose anywhere. Yeah. And I guess we'll try out the stand. Yeah, he went on nice and tight. I noticed the peg went in his, well, his right foot here easier, but his ankle joint there is a little more loose. So I put it in the tighter left foot because the ankle's there. And that's not even trying to pose if you kind of balance him out. But I guess one good benefit about this scale, this is the first four inch I've, I've bought at least in many decades, is you don't have a ton of weight gravity isn't dragging you down. That's the problem with a lot of the NECA bigger creatures. And end on the spinny thing. I had no idea what to expect. Like I said, I was randomly talking with Fox on our live stream last night about this, and uh, he was up for same day delivery with Amazon. So, I don't know. Just really, really curious. So first impressions for the money, for the weapons you get, little extras. I, do, I mean, I, I do wish he was in a scale that I was doing, but then again, you know, I don't have any other World War II figures in a different scale, so that would really bug me. It's kind of like my Predators are 110, whereas uh, Black Series is 112, and yeah, there you go. But all in all, yeah, I'm pretty impressed. Of course, being this small, there's going to be some fiddly bits. Again, getting the guns just right in his hands, popping the hands on and off, getting the helmet with its strap fully secure. I'm sure getting the backpack on and off can be a little annoying. Just go slow. Don't go ripping and tearing at things. But I also understand this is a mass-produced thing, and there will be QC issues. There will be broken parts because they're not really going through a U.S. company that's kind of assuring them and doing that. It seems like the company, Joy Toy, Joy Toys, whatever, has been around for about a decade. It seems like they do a lot of Gundam stuff and anime sci-fi. That's cool, uh, just not my bag, you know. I wish they did more World War II, but you know what? I'll take three more than none. I think I'll buy the others. I would love it if they would do a Japanese though, and they they haven't. Um, yeah, Japanese. They they do the American, of course, the German, the Wehrmacht, and uh, the Red Army here. I mean, if they wanted, they could do French, British, Italian, but um, I get why they just want to go with the big ones. What if they'd ever do any small scale, or, well, this scale, rather, vehicles? I, I understand, like, a lot of vehicles would be too huge. Even, like, an airplane would be too big here. But what about, like, a Jeep or at least a motorcycle? If they were historically correct, and I don't expect 100% accuracy, I know he's not. 
but 100% accuracy in a toy way. I'm good with that. You know, kind of like with the weapons we were talking about. They're not 100%, but for their size and scale and cost, it's a, you know, an icon. It's a notion, if that makes sense. Well, he can't quite get into a saluting position, at least not with me just trying here real quick. But still, a lot better than not only the old Star Wars, the ran through quarter figures, but even the uh, G.I. Joes from the 80s. So, hey. And it's neat that two guns, total of four hands, two hats, and a base. Which is kind of more than... Oh, and of course, removable gear, satchel, and backpack, and even the bedroll. Pretty neat. <clears throat> Again, just something I kind of lucked into and thought, eh, let's give it a go. But let me know what you think. How does the paint look to you? I'm sure it's not like... Um, Hasbro face printing. I'm sure it's pretty basic on the uh, face paint and hair and stuff. Kind of to be expected at the size and cost. But how does the uniform look to you? The colorations, the camo? Let me know. And how are the guns colored? Do they have paint on them or are they just one color? Kind of hope they at least did color the stocks. But if not, I'll live. Of course, you could always paint it yourself. It'd be really neat if they also colored the slings. And yeah, he fit on his base pretty well. I would just say again, at this small scale, just, just be careful with everything. But something new to kind of show you this weekend. I don't know, kind of excited me. With that, this is Misha. And catch you with a more prepared and serious video next time.